Hello and welcome to the RAST Network. What you're about to hear and see is limited to general financial information only. Please be sure to speak to your financial planner or refer to our financial services guide available at rask.com.au slash FSG before acting on the information. Kay Campbell, welcome to this very special episode of the Australian Finance Podcast. It's always a special episode, Owen, and this is the very first episode we've been recording for about six weeks. Yeah. We saved this one for 2024. We've saved this one. Everything else was pre-recorded. Sorry to let you in on the behind the curtain. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a very special one because we've counted down to one big money goal for the year ahead. Why one? Because... It can feel very overwhelming when you're sorting out your finances and many people tuning in have probably just set themselves the goal of sorting out their finances this year, maybe starting to invest, paying off debt. So we want to just simplify things and instead of setting 100 different money-related goals, we just have one big money goal for the year. It's one thing you're going to work towards and achieve. It's one North Star you're going to head towards. Maybe for you it's, I really want to save my first thousand dollars. I want to have an emergency fund. I want to get out of debt. I want to know where my superannuation is. Mm. And I think a lot of people early on, they tend to have a lot of different goals on the go at one time and it can become a little bit hard. Um, We sometimes use the analogy of the North Star, which people who are fans of survival shows or even things maybe going back, sailing these types of things, uh, in different parts of the world, you can use the North Star to guide you. Um, you just look up into the sky and you can see that that's the direction you're going. Even if you don't know the exact pathway, it kind of puts you in good stead. Um, So we're going to talk about some of the feedback that we received uh, through the community and what people actually think about goal setting, how our community goes about it, and how other people around you may have, you know, I guess, failed to achieve their goals or achieve success. So, And you might be wondering why we're putting a goal-setting episode out for the year yes, in February. Good point. It's because a lot of people in January, at the very start of the year, you're in holiday mode, everything seems possible and achievable, and you can set sort of lofty New Year's resolutions that all of the various <laughs> research says that most people don't mm. keep those resolutions past the end of January. Um, so we're talking about goal setting in Feb because we want you to have the chance now. You don't have to wait till the 1st of January, 2025. Please don't. No. Use the time now at the start of February to go, well, what do I want to work towards this year? And we want to break it down in this episode so you've got something achievable that you can work towards this year. That means that in 11 months time, you're going to be in a better financial position than you were right now. Yeah, I was reading a New York Times article over Christmas and it suggested that the average New Year's resolution lasts until about 32 days. A lot of studies vary on this, by the way. But I've read a lot of different <laughs> ones. <laughs> but let's say this is for around 50, maybe it's 30 days, right? That would put us around about now. And um, I don't often set, like I have ambitions for the year ahead, Kate, but I definitely don't sit down and be like, this is what I'm going to achieve. This is my New Year's resolution by this day. I tend to take my time and I think to myself, well, if it doesn't happen straight away, it doesn't happen. Like, for example, uh, I wrote to our, anyone that subscribes to our newsletter, I wrote to you just before Christmas to say, one of the things is I, I think as I've got older, I've realized that I can't do everything. And so getting other people's help along the journey has been very valuable. And the problem is when you do that in finance or in health, a lot of the times, if you go and see like a personal trainer, they've taken some time off at Christmas. Uh, if you go and see a financial advisor, they don't come back until mid-January. So even if you wanted to set a, you know, a news resolution with the help of someone else, you do have to wait a little bit by necessity. So, um, so don't be disheartened if you do get to this point of the year and you think, well, I haven't achieved my health goal. I haven't achieved my money goal. Uh, forgiveness is really important, especially for yourself. So here we are in February, and we're going to go through some of the things that um, everyone in our community has told us about their goal setting habits, about what's worked and what hasn't. Yeah. So when I asked on Instagram, if you set financial goals, 76% of you said yes, and 19% said you wanted to start setting goals in 2024. Interesting. So one in five people are saying they want to start doing goal setting this year. And I think a lot of people don't, right? It's just a lot of people don't goal set because they've never done it. They don't know how to. They're overwhelmed by it, particularly with money. Yeah, or maybe you only goal set in one particular area of your life. It might be you're used to setting work goals mm. because you have to for KPIs and for performance reviews, but you're not used to setting goals in other areas of your life or it seems like something that's very boring or a lame thing to do. But I think it's actually a really exciting process because not only do you get to work out what you want to prioritise and spend your time on this year, you can also add fun goals in there Yeah, because I've got some really 
uh, mundane house related goals like pull out a wall heater that's uh, <laughs> been on my list for a year. So it's officially become a goal this year. I know the one. <laughs> but I've also got fun goals like go and do a cooking class. It doesn't have to be a, a lengthy change your life activity. It can just be one fun thing you want to do. Yeah. Uh, and that's really good to, to blend those things together. I think we've spoken about this before. Um, a lot of people prioritize very stereotypical things like budgeting and money. Uh, they may do weight loss or these types of things or going to the gym X number of times a year or whatever. Because a lot of people don't budget things like as it relates to, say, the relationships and those types of things. A lot of people don't budget things when it comes to things like mental health or social well-being or all these types of things because they're not as easy and tangible for us to kind of put a number against or something like that. But they definitely help. So we had another question that Kate did. It's, uh, does setting financial goals help you reach financial milestones? And I was actually, this is probably the one that I was most surprised about. So does it help you? Uh, 62% said yes. 31% said sometimes. So 62% said yes, it does help me reach a financial milestone, which is pretty high. Yeah. And people were mentioning things like just having something there, even though it was maybe quite an audacious goal that they knew they weren't going to reach at least having something out there in the open made them work towards it and they made a lot more progress than they think they would have done otherwise. Mm. So I might just skip down a second here, Kate, to the second, to the, I guess the fourth part of it, which is what helps you reach your financial goals? Any tips for first timers? So this is important if you haven't set one yet or if you've just been doing this for a long time and you have had success, what were some of the things that people said helped them? So someone said they document their goals, they add in regular check-ins, and then they make minor adjustments as needed, which I think is important because we Mm. can often set one goal at the start of the year, but then life happens, maybe you change jobs, you have different levels of income, and so you do need to be able to adjust your goal with your life circumstances. Mm. Yeah. Did you? So you've you always wanted to write a book, Buying Happiness, which is your book. Was that a was that a goal that you had to prioritize and work around other things? That one kind of just emerged. I didn't, Hmm. I mean, 10 years ago, I would have said I wanted to write a book, but I probably thought it was going to be a fantasy novel. Um, I wouldn't have thought it would be a finance book. Um, So that was actually a goal that kind of just came out of nowhere. Yeah, cool. Um, So I hadn't really planned for it, but it was something that came up and I made the space for it. Yeah. So it deprioritized other areas in my life. Yeah. And so you do, as this person said, make those adjustments to move things around and maybe shuffle things. And uh, one of the activities that you can do actually is actually working through this and thinking about where you want to be in 12 months. We'll get to that in a moment. But you might actually realize that the goal that you are working towards is not the one that you want to work towards right now. And so things can change and that can often cause a bit of friction, but um, sometimes it's for the best. That's why you do these exercises. So what else helped people? Someone else said they have a family vision board with goals and financial info that they update monthly. So that's Mm -hmm. sort of getting everybody on board there, which is cool. Um, Someone else said aim huge. And if you fall short, you're probably better off than your original goal. Mm -hmm. Start small with automated amounts to saving and investing. So we talk about automated things a lot and where you can take that mental load away so good things are happening in the background without you thinking about it. That's such a good thing. We talk about automation all the time. Just keep it simple and let the uh, let the computer do it for you. I like it. Someone else said set one small goal every month. So there's only 12 things to do in the year instead of having to figure out what all your goals are at the start of the year, just one thing each month. And over time, it really adds up. Yeah. Um, my brother, speaking of automation and small goals, my brother started investing last year after he attended our event. I've spoken about uh, this yes. before. Yep. And he started using Raise, which is the micro-investing platform. And he adds some of his own money, like extra on top of the roundups. And he sent me a screenshot the other day. I won't say exactly how much he's got in there, but he's done exceptionally well. And i got to say, I'm proud of him. I think he's proud of himself. Never thought he'd be an investor. And he just started with a few dollars and then I just explained to him how the app worked. You don't actually need to save. It automates everything. It rounds up your purchases. And all of a sudden, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's he's done pretty well. He's got a few grand in there already and he's very happy. That's so, awesome. Yeah. Uh, there was another one here working backwards, which um, a coach might call chunking down. Uh, so you have that bigger goal and then you work backwards. So someone said, I work backwards. Can I do $200 per week? Yep. Therefore, my goal is $11,000 over 52 weeks. It's good. Like it if you can do do that. That's actually really really good, particularly at this time uh, when cost of living is an issue for a lot of folks. Uh, someone else said they run two scenarios in their head: one where they execute the goal, and one where they don't. 
Ah, so I think okay. that's kind of interesting because you can see, well, is that a goal you really want to work towards? Because it's easy to take on other people's goals. So thinking about, well, where would I be in 12 months if I work towards this goal or where would I be if I didn't and sort of focus my energy and attention somewhere else? And you can run different scenarios and think about, well, what's actually important to me right now? Yeah. Um, my partner and I, we had a pretty uh, in-depth conversation about these types of things last night because it may not necessarily be two scenarios where you have perfect vision. Like you can say, I'm going to do this, all this. Sometimes if you do one goal, it removes the ability to do the other goal entirely. Especially with money. Like we can usually only save for one or two big things at once. Like if we're really saving hard for a mm. house deposit over the next few years, it might mean we can't do Antarctica as well <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and yeah. Europe and Thailand. Yeah. And so we've talked about that many times over the past year about how to kind of take the good bits from something and try and port it into something cheaper or more accessible, um, which is a great technique, which we can dive into in another show. Um, but these are the, this scenario, it reminds me of regret minimization. So you basically cast your mind forward and you think to yourself, well, which one am I going to enjoy the most? Which one will I regret the most, like if I don't do it? Um, and that's actually a really interesting scenario that a lot of people use for money decisions, but also for big life decisions, like buying a house in a particular area, for example. Another one was a variable income. So they budget a little bit each pay. So that's something that gets people hung up a lot is they uh, they think, well, I'm a contractor. My income's all over the place. So how do I do that? Well, you can just do it when you get paid. Yeah. It's, it's a lot of Australia operates this way. Yeah. And each time you get paid, you work out, well, what am I putting towards my goals this month or this fortnight? Yeah. So those are the things that help people, Kate, quickly. What stops the community from setting goals? Yeah. So I thought that was an interesting one because I did want to understand, well, why people might not set goals or what they do mm. instead. And one of the responses was feeling lost about where to put my money. Mm -hmm. One was I can never stick to them. Mm hmm one was I change my mind regularly. Yeah, um, me all. Someone said, it's for me, it's more about where do you start? And someone else said too many expenses, which the the idea of too many expenses came up again when I asked what stops people from reaching their goals. Okay. So now that now they've actually set a goal and now what actually slows them down or means that they won't get to it. Yeah. So there are a few mentions of children, yeah, <laughs> children, yeah. uh, mortgages, vehicle breakdowns, inflation came up quite a lot and market declines. Um, someone said they really need something to help them track their progress. Yeah. Unexpected emergencies, spending on material things. Someone did say KFC in there. <laughs> yeah, I love that one. So someone said KFC and analysis paralysis. Um, probably no problem picking things when you go to KFC, I'm sure. But uh, analysis paralysis is probably one of the biggest things that holds people back from investing their money. But also a lot of times it holds people back from things like bank accounts, which ETFs to buy. Like there's so many ways that analysis paralysis, which is just, and Kate's talked about it many times in the show, typically when you have more than three choices, it becomes more and more difficult mm. to make a choice. Um, and so that's why we say just pick three and just go with those, see what happens. Um, but KFC is definitely, I can vouch for that, KFC <laughs> is, is a very good way to spend a bit of money. Um, kids is a big one because kids for a lot of family, it kind of hits both sides of your your personal income statement, if you like. It hits your income because typically you go down to one or one and a bit in income and typically your costs blow out as well. So it's a double whammy uh, unless you have parents that can help with childcare and these types of things. It becomes really, really taxing. And it's not just, as we all know, having a child is not just a you know, a few years of saving and she'll be right. It's typically, you know, 20, 30 years uh, and the parents nod their head. Um, it's typically a long-term commitment. So that's a big decision. And that's why when it comes to goal setting um, with, with children in particular, it can be quite difficult because you just simply don't know. Is your partner going to return to work? Are you going to return to work? How much are you going to earn? Are you going to go back to the same career? Um, what impact is that going to have on other parts of your life? You simply don't know. And a lot of that uncertainty would hold people back from achieving goals, but also setting goals in the first place. Yeah. And another thing that came up was that idea of procrastinating. I will start tomorrow. I'll start next month. I'll start next year. Just putting mm. off the goal or the starting point or I couldn't work towards it this month. Ah, oh, doesn't matter about next month. Yeah. It's so true, isn't it? And um, we... We see this a lot of the times with people who are new to learning about money and new to the podcast. So if you are new, welcome. Don't forget to subscribe because we talk about this stuff all the time uh, and it's, we try and make it fun. Uh, so 
what tends to happen is the learning curve is very steep with finance. It's very overwhelming because it's emotional. It's very important, but you feel intimidated. And so the procrastination is just kind of elevated, particularly with finances, because you're like, gosh, I know I need to pay down the debt. I read that barefoot thing years ago, and he said it's probably not a good idea, but I've done it anyway. So there's a bit of shame. There's a bit of all these other things. There's a bit of envy when you look at your friends who don't have the debt. But procrastinating, as we know, it's not going to help you necessarily, and you don't need to do it all in one day. So you can start very small, start with a few dollars invested to get your kind of like feet wet and just learn how it all works. Listen to the show. There's ways you can do it now. Mm. And now we know that most of you are setting goals or want to start setting goals this year. Setting goals does help you reach financial milestones. We know some of the reasons why you don't reach the goals you want or maybe your progress isn't as quick as you want. How can we start thinking about what goal we want to set this year for our finances? I love this quote. Where did this quote come from? The Zig Ziglar quote? Yeah. If you aim at nothing, you'll hit it every time. Mm. Yeah, I, hadn't, I don't think I'd heard that one. I'd heard the, the, another one, which is if you don't know where you're going, any road will take you there. Um, but I think it's really- how would, you, how would you start? The way I started my how goal setting process for the year, and it was kind of a whole two month process, I kind of started in December and went through January, okay. was reflecting on the year that's been, the last 12 months. And one of the big questions I asked myself I asked myself a small version of this weekly and I asked myself a big version of it at the end of the year. What do I want to do more of in 2024 based off everything I've done throughout 2023 and what do I want to do less of? And that was after I kind of looked at all the key milestones from the year. So I was looking through my camera roll, I was looking through my calendar and looking at Hmm. all of the things that I liked and didn't like throughout the year and then thinking about, well, how can I use this information and all of the feelings and the notes I took during the year in my journal and think about, well, how do I want to shape 2024? What do I want it to look like? Where do I want to be at the end of 2024? And then having that broad feeling of what I want 2024 to look like, then I can start working backwards and going, well, what are some of the goals or small steps and milestones I need to reach for that to happen? So you ask yourself, so you do the big one every year and you look at like the big chunky things that stood out, maybe like say writing the book or going on a particular holiday or whatever the case may be. Then you do it weekly as well. Like you kind of like, you reflect, do you you choose a particular day that week or? Usually each Sunday. um, I just set aside half an hour for a bit of a a weekly review and plan my calendar for the week ahead. That helps me feel very organized. So Mm -hmm. I will ask myself, what do I want to do more of next week and what do I want to do less of? And that's just helps me instead of having to do this big, deep whole afternoon reflection because usually yeah. don't have that much time on the weekend. It's just a small thing to go, okay, here's a few things. Maybe I wanted to not have my phone in my room at night time. And so that's something I want to do less of next week and how am I going to do one small thing to change that? Mm. And maybe I really enjoyed going for walks in the morning before work this week. That's something I want to take into next week. So thinking about... What did you like and not like and how can you bring that into the next week? So it's kind of being intentional about the goal setting in the sense of um, you are actually using like hard data, let's say, like you've got the year or the week that was, let's say it's a year, 2023, if you're listening, what things did you spend money on? What things did you do in your lifestyle that you really enjoyed and thoroughly you can, you've got those memory dividends that we talk about and what things maybe simply did you not get as much enjoyment from did you not get as much happiness from Mm. uh, and can we avoid those yeah because you might just go well this week i didn't spend much time with friends and family so that's something i want to do more of next week what is something i can do this weekend to make sure next week i've got some time with friends and family so that's like each week i just do a small reflection look at highlights from the week things Mm. i want to focus on the next week what's coming up do i have time for that have i prioritized what i want to prioritize? Do, are there any questions I want to think about? So I just do a really mini scale version yeah. each week and, and plan the calendar and all of that sort of stuff a bit longer at the end of each month and then give myself sort of weeks to slowly think about it at the end of each year. So when you get to the end of the year and you start goal setting for the year ahead, where do you put the things that you come up with? Like, Do you put them in like a notebook? Do you have like a phone app? Like, what, Where do you actually put that stuff? Yeah, my review at the end of each week, I'll just do in my journal. So I've got that physically written down. But with the sort of 
end of year review and goal setting, I did use a Google Doc because it just meant I could keep coming back and changing things because mm. as I developed what my 2024 was going to look at like, I realized, well, maybe I was putting too many things on my plate. And when I thought about the time commitment for each of these things, it wasn't feasible to work towards all of these at once. Or I had to prioritize, this is going to happen in the first half of this year. This is going to happen in the second half. So having it in a Google Mm. Doc, I just sort of used a table, made it really easy to keep editing until I was happy with it. And then it's something that I can keep editing each month. So I might get to the end of February and go, yeah, what I thought is not really achievable or it's too much at the moment. I don't have enough time for other areas of life that are important to me, like relationships and my health and well-being. So maybe I'm going to adjust that goal. And I think having it in a Google Doc makes it really easy to keep making small changes throughout the year. It's not static. Yeah, I love the act of writing things down, but then I'm frustrated when I have to then port it to the computer and I can't. I'm also thinking, well, I didn't get that right. And one thing that you realize the longer you do these exercises, the more things change. Mm. And while change in the beginning can be something that puts people off or forces them to procrastinate, it's actually a pretty healthy thing because the goal that, you know, you set two and a half years ago may not necessarily be the goal that you've uh, identified with today. Um, uh, You know, maybe two and a half years ago, you're a bit younger, you thought, well, maybe I'll you know, go and do that holiday to X, Y, Z, a skiing holiday. And now you think, you know, you're a bit older, you're like, oh, maybe I won't go for a skiing holiday. Maybe I'll go in the camper van or whatever. And so maybe things change in your life and that's okay. Um, I do use Notion for this type of stuff, for the life planning stuff. Um, I have, we've been through this before, but I I did start with, I always started with what are the things that I like and what are the things that I dislike. So it's very similar to you, but I don't necessarily say 2023, I just say, what are the things that I like in my life and what are the things that I don't like as much? And that could be like fresh air, nature. It could be don't like busy places kind of thing. Uh, And then I work from there, as you know. And I often reflect on that and I make sure that when I categorize things, I categorize them by decade or uh, the the, the shortest I'll do is one year because in this episode, the title of this episode is like one big money goal for 2024. And I've made it pretty clear on the show before that my big focus is buying a farm, but I don't, that's not the only thing that is in my life, <laughs> but that's, that's definitely one of those things. And um, I have that like key- keyed into one of those columns around which decade I want to achieve that in. Um, are there any other questions that people could reflect on now, Kate, as they think about, well, setting up one of these things and taking pride in how they measure their goals and these types of things? Another really good question to ask yourself is what stopped you from reaching goals or things you've wanted to achieve or have in the past? Because this can help you work backwards a little bit. Because if you've set a money goal in the past that you haven't maybe even worked on at all or done anything about, and it's something you've carried across for three years, like maybe for three years you've been saying, I want to start investing. So that's a really common one we hear. Mm. What has stopped you over the last three years? Because- if you just carry on as you are and put that on the list again, it might mean it won't happen. So how can you think about, well, what stopped me in the past? Maybe you didn't know enough or maybe you thought you needed to save some more money or your income wasn't secure enough. So thinking about, well, what stopped you in the past and how can we start to unpick some of those things for this year so we can go, well, how can we start investing this year? Because maybe we need to make that goal a bit more actionable and break it into small steps of, okay, first I need to put $50 aside. Then I need to investigate three different options of brokerage accounts. And then we go from there. Yeah, that's really good. I think last year you spoke a little bit about, and this was through our events, um, coming back to 2024, um, at the events you did speak about, you know, this idea and uh, and uh, I think you were, the happiness guy episode for those of you that are familiar it's one of our most popular um you spoke about this idea of like it's about you know progress not perfection and the idea is you get confidence with money by doing something a lot of people Mm. if they're stuck in analysis paralysis mode they never reach that confidence state because they never actually just take the risk and try their hand and i think if you kind of recognize what's held you back in the past you might be able to say well you know i spent three weeks looking at brokers to choose to invest with. And I didn't end up going with any of them. Maybe just pick one and see what happens. Um, And you might discover those types of little mini roadblocks that hold you back along the way. Um, So one 
thing that you talked about in the past was this idea of short, medium, and long-term goals. Do you still do that? Yeah, I think so. Um, it's probably changed a little bit. I'm focusing really more on this year, um, and the other goals are more in the background. So, mm. like, say my long-term goal is still financial independence. That's something I've been working towards for eight years now. Yeah, and that's, but because it's part of the furniture now, and it's something that I feel like I've got enough confidence that I'm on the right track. I'm not having to change my investments. I am changing the amount that I input into my investments each month because my income changes and my life keeps changing. So that's a variable, but the goal has sort of become part of the furniture. It's just part of what I do. Mm. So I don't really have to think about it as a goal anymore. It's kind of, it's interesting as the years have gone on, the financial independence goal has fallen down the list in terms of it's not something I'm actively working towards because it's just happening in the background now. Yeah. But you automate so much of that. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, yeah, it's not something I actively choose to do each year. It's just something that's who I am. It's more of an identity goal now that I invest. I put money aside for the future. That's part of who I am now. Yeah. Do you, um, do you categorize your goals in any way? Yeah. So I've, I sort of broke my goals up into outcome goals where it's maybe something fun like go to a cooking class. It was kind of a I know when that goal's ticked off mm -hmm. versus ongoing ones like daily movement where you don't ever reach an end point. You just keep doing that activity or working on my relationships. So I broke those apart mm -hmm. as well. So I sort of plan for them a bit differently because if my goal is to work on my relationships, then I have to think of what a small input goals I can do each week to work on that because you never reach an end state with that. You're always working on your relationships. You're always working on daily movement. So that's kind of, I, I broke them apart and that helped me think about them a bit better. But I also categorized my one-off goals. I broke them into community and relationships because that's something I'm trying to mm -hmm. prioritize a lot this year. Creativity and adventure. So I tried to put lots of fun things in there. Health and well-being, learning and development, I didn't put money in business as a category, but I think that's quite helpful for a lot of people. And then there's miscellaneous goals like uh, sort out the wall heater. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. It's uh, it's really, uh, it's just really interesting hearing you talk about all this. And I think um, it's funny, you know, I really take a lot of pride in my vision board and all those types of things. It's probably one of the reasons I use Notion over Google Docs is because I can just make it look so fun. I've uh, never tried the vision board really. No? No. No. Yeah, I love it because it's a, and that's where all my goals sit within that, and then you can kind of like link the goals together. Because yeah. what you find is if you go through this long enough, you'll find that your family goal is actually a money goal for some reason. Like if you want financial independence, it may help you with children uh, or these types of things. Or maybe if you want to be more social, you might get a job that allows you to be more social, whether you're in retirement or you're younger. Um, I noticed in the notes here too, you you talk about breaking down goals into the different quarters. So you might have from, say, Jan to March to June to September to the end of the year. Um, that's actually really interesting too because I think when we had uh, – we've done a, a course with Queenie Tan from Invest with Queenie. Shout out to Queenie and Pablo. Um, actually saw them a couple of weeks ago in Sydney. It was really oh, lovely. lovely. Just randomly stumbled across them. <laughs> and I was like, oh, what are the chances? Anyway, um, she talked about in the course, you know, having those – those goals, whether they're monthly or quarterly, it means that you can actually tick things off every you know, month or every three months and you get those feedback loops. And a lot of research shows that those shorter goals actually compound into much bigger goals down the line, kind of like your financial independence mm. thing. That was a big thing at the start and you're probably measuring progress monthly. Very regularly yeah. at the start, yeah. And you started to get that feel good of, oh, I met that one. Or I nearly got to that, but it's still positive. And I've got this much money this month. And you slowly just see it ticking over for you and it becomes quite addictive. And then eventually it just rolls by itself. And so, if you can break them down into monthly or quarterly goals, it keeps it present in your mind. Yeah. And so, that's what, once you have your goals for the year, thinking about, well, what are the financial and time commitments as well? Because sometimes you realize, mm. well, there's just way too many things on this list and it's impossible. So, I need to start prioritizing what's most important to me now. And something that helps me is because I don't like to let things go completely. At the end of my goals list, I have things I probably won't have time to do in the next year or two. So hmm. any goals that I take off that list because they're not as much of a priority, but I still want to do them eventually, I put down there. So they're somewhere. They haven't been written off. They just aren't the priority at the moment. And then once I have 
my goals and I think, okay, what I've got is fairly realistic, I'll go, well, what do I want to achieve during January and what do I want to achieve during February that will help make a small bit of progress towards that goal? Yeah, cool. For your financial independence goal, let's take this one. Did you, do you track that in like a Google sheet or a Excel or some sort of what you, spreadsheet? Yeah. So at the very beginning, back in 27, start of 2017, when I started working towards this and I had my very first thousand dollars in my savings account, I started a bit of a net worth tracker yep. and I've been updating that. At the start, it was very often, yep. probably too often, more often than I got paid, which was a bit silly. But <laughs> I was updating that a lot and I have sort of columns for different things and it's changed during the year. So now there's empty columns and things, but I've just tracked my net worth over the years. And it's quite interesting to see how my journey has progressed. And it tells the story of my finances because maybe I used to use that micro investing app, but I don't use it anymore. But the column's still there, but it's stopped at certain points. Mm. And I can see how I've progressed over time. A lot of the financial independence community do that. Um, and they do it so well. And I think it's really important early days. Yeah. But I do it a lot. I check it a lot less now. It's probably a update a couple of times a year, just check in and see how I'm progressing. I'm more thinking about the inputs now rather than the output. We had some really lovely, some of them I didn't share with you, so sorry about that. We had some really lovely uh, emails come in from the community over Christmas. I think it was just a time when people wanted to write to people and say thank you. And um, we had some really lovely people write in and say some things like getting out of debt. Someone had only been listening to the podcast for two months, had paid off their credit card, had basically got wow. their personal loan back yeah. and they'd made their first investment and they just wanted to say thanks uh, and they never thought they'd do it. They're in their 40s um, and it was just like this dramatic turnaround and they were tracking things and they had tried all the apps um, and it was just really, really nice to, to hear and I, I can't remember the exact question that they asked but basically effectively I said that you know, they they wanted to get to a point where they could save a couple hundred grand for their retirement. And I said, if they keep going the way they're going, they're going to have a lot more than that in a few years. And I, the one thing that I did say to them is when you start on one of these journeys, whether whatever it is in your life, really, it doesn't have to be money, but money's an easy one. The first few years seem like they're the hardest, but they're actually the most rewarding. And so like when you go back to your example of the uh, like tracking in the early days, you were really like probably addicted to checking it yeah, and it updating like this. A thousand, fifteen hundred, two thousand. Yeah, and now you're like, ah, oh, probably it's probably gone up, and you wouldn't even know, right? Um, and it's actually liberating that first sequence that you go through because it actually you're making so much progress mentally. That's the big thing. You're making those leaps and bounds. And Aussie Firebug, Matt from Aussie Firebug, talks about this a lot, and he's got his. Every month for like the last however many years yeah. he's been doing it, he's documented everything and you can see everything. And he says, uh, he, you know, he, he'll show you in that document like that over time the compounding's taken off and whatever. And he says often on his podcast, Aussie Firebug, he says that even if your goal is a million dollars, you don't get the benefit at a million. You get the benefit at like three, four, five hundred thousand because at that point you can tell your boss to get lost if you're sick of it mm. because you've got enough money to move or make a change. And so, even though your goal may be a million, you don't have to reach a million to achieve the idea of independence, if that makes sense. And I think um, once you just make that progress, you start to feel that confidence, as we talked about, and that's the true benefit of this. Yeah. And you learn so much about yourself. That's why I think it's super important that everyone just sets one money thing they're going to work towards this year or something they want to learn about or an emergency fund they want to set up because you learn so much about yourself and who you are in that process. You learn what you value and where you spend your money and where you spend your time and how you want to organize your life and the things you want to work towards. This stuff helps you in every area of your life. But yeah, it does. Yeah. And uh, it, you just become more appreciative of things when you become intentional because you you start to move towards things that do make you healthier and happier throughout your life. Uh, and you Another thing I've realized, and you've realized this, and we've spoken about this a lot, is that when you move towards that way of living, you actually realize there's a lot of things you spend money on that do not bring you happiness. I know that as well as anyone. And um, there, you can have all those things and still it doesn't necessarily bring you more happiness. Uh, my big goal, there's no change, just as an update for regular <laughs> listeners of the podcast, it's still a... Uh, it's still a property. I still want to buy a farm. That's where I grew up and that's where I want my kids to grow up. 
but it is going to come at a cost. You know, I was sitting down with my partner last night and we we're talking about this and how it does, you know, you juggle that you have to prioritize. As someone said, you've got to imagine different states yeah. of your future self and um, it comes at a cost. It's like hard work if you want to buy one of those. And Has your time frame changed over the last 12 months <sighs> since you spoke It's probably about going it? to change, yeah, to be honest. And that's been a hard realization is like it's probably going to take longer and anyone who's bought property and, or is buying property, especially in Sydney, our thoughts go out to you, um, you know that uh, oftentimes when you have to delay something, it actually escapes you because you it moves faster than you can move if you mm. don't really focus on it. But that's like a lot of goals too. Um, there are some things that you can't do at certain points of your life. So if we go back to that, you have two different future selves, imagine yourself there. That's definitely what it is for me and that's, I've always thought to myself, there are certain things you can do at certain parts of your life and you should prioritize those goals. And that may be in your 20s, you want to go on a Kentucky because if you're 35 and you go on Kentucky, it might be odd. I don't even think they let you on a Kentucky at 35. You might have to go to like Top Deck or Sour Croatia or one of those slightly older ones um, where it's more acceptable. But, uh, you know, they there are certain things you can't do. Like in your 70s and 80s, when I talk to a lot of retirees, Unfortunately, you probably can't go and hike Mount Everest. So you may have to wind those things back. And so there are things in your life that you have to prioritize. And for example, kids, and that's a big milestone for a lot of people, it means you're going to drop income. So maybe mm-hmm. it's things that you have to do sooner. And by doing that, by making that conscious choice to reprioritize, you actually give up something else. Mm. How but- have you felt having to adjust the time frame of a goal that was really important to you? Uh, pretty frustrated, to be honest. Like, um, as you know with me, Kate, if I want to do something, I'm going to do everything I can to get that thing, literally yeah. everything. Um, and that's cool. That's, that's, that, 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 that's like, that's something that I can choose. Like in a, in a relationship, you've got to understand that your partner may have different set of priorities. You might have shared goals, but there might be a negotiation mm. that has to happen and that's okay. Um, and like a good one is, um, say I wanted to climb Everest. I didn't want to do the full thing because that would be probably take too long, but um, I wanted to do that. We're going to Europe this year and I'm cur- currently looking for half marathons in Europe. Uh, we're on our destina- at our destination so that uh, I may be able to get a similar experience like in a new place surrounded by people that are probably pretty positive if they're running half marathons or marathons and I get to kind of be out in the open, which is kind of in essence what I was getting with the Everest Base Camp. So you can try and shuffle things around like that and that doesn't feel nearly as bad. But when there are things that maybe are roadblocks that you can't avoid, well, that feels a little bit worse. Um, and you just got to, I think if you've got a partner, you just got to talk about it. Yeah. I think that's the, the number one thing. You can't just bottle it up. Because so. I know last year when we had Evan on for one of our Money Hacks episode, we were discussing the the pausing or the adjusting of goals because mm. life was happening. So maybe you had to press pause on this goal for five years because X, Y, Z happened and how to manage those feelings. Because if there's something you really want and a work towards, but you, you just can't achieve if there's lots of other things you have to do, um, mm. it can be really hard to manage those feelings. Well, another one is, um, say, investing in 2023, we, we have a, um, at RASC, we have a, a Google chat with all of the podcast hosts and all of the, the team. And uh, Amy in the chat this morning said, was interested in understanding how Australia effectively is going with saving, like how much money are Australians saving? And we do measure that. The ABS measures that on behalf of the government. And savings has fallen dramatically, as we've talked about on the show, for the average household. And a lot of people have made sacrifices that they probably didn't expect in 2021, 2022, when they thought interest rates were going to be really low forever. And so people have stopped investing, which we we know the community is telling us that. They've put off upgrading their house or renovating. They've put off going overseas because they simply just can't afford it. And so all of those goals have been totally unavoidable, uh, uh, you know, and they've probably haven't been achieved. And that's, that's okay. That's like that's where the kind of like it's okay forgiveness comes in and you just make do with what you've got and you try and take that you know instead of maybe going on a a trip to say Margaret River maybe you if you're in Victoria you go to Robe 
which is on the border of Adelaide and South Australia. Or if, uh, if you really wanted to go to New Zealand and you wanted to go to Christchurch or Queenstown or whatever, uh, maybe you go to the Blue Mountains if you're in Sydney because it's cheaper and you can drive there for a couple of days and you can camp. And so you just make those compromises and you try and capture the essence of what you're doing. Mm. Uh, and we've seen that a lot over the past year and that's okay. Yeah. Um, okay, so the number one thing Kate and I wanted you to get from this episode is simply this. Just try and find one thing in your life that you want to work towards. One big money goal that you have. You might want to break it down. You might want to find a way to measure it. You might want to find a way to stay accountable. And maybe that's finding a friend who also wants to start an emergency fund this year and be able to check in and help each other along the way. Yeah. Um, if you use Perla, which is a long-term sp- who is a long-term sponsor of the show, uh, inside Perla, you can set a fire goal because it was built for financial independence initially, and you can track your bank accounts and your investment portfolio through that. Um, you might want to use a spreadsheet as Kate's done. You might want to use Notion as I've done. Maybe just have a recurring calendar invite once a month that says, have a look mm. at how I'm going towards my big money goal this year. Big, hairy, audacious goals. Uh, that's uh, in the book Scale Up for those of you that are in it. It's a business book. It's called BAG, B-H-A-D, Big, Hairy, Audacious Goals um, for business owners. Check it out. It's a great book. And find a way to make working towards this goal fun. We don't want to put off our happiness until we reach that goal. We want to be able to enjoy the process. And maybe saving doesn't feel fun all the time, but if you can find some little ways to make it more interesting or find someone to do it with, I think that really helps. Yeah, absolutely. Um, And, you know, Writing down your goals is going to help you regardless. Like if you go and see a life coach, a counselor, psychologist even, if that's what you need, um, do it and you'll get an expert on your side. They can really, really help you detangle some of those things. Uh, If you're new to the podcast, if you've enjoyed the summer series, we highly encourage you to stick around. Of course, we'd say that. Um, But we do because we cover all of these topics in much more detail as well as some investing and property and all that sort of stuff in 2024. Um, We'll also have a lot of Q&A with financial advisors and these types of people who are qualified to give advice. So um, they've seen it all before. So you can write into us and get some help while you go, some free wisdom from the experts that we bring in. Um, But pick that one goal. Let us know what it is. If if you want to let us know on Instagram, on Twitter, um, just send us an email. You can get in contact with us by the ask a question form that's available in your podcast player on Spotify, Apple, wherever you're listening to this. And maybe that helps you stay accountable. If you send us your goal via the question form or via Instagram and then let us know at the end of the year how you went towards that goal. Yeah, absolutely. We would love love to do that. Um, Yeah, we would love to do it. And uh, keep an eye on our mailing list as well because I might share some resources on how to actually do this in the next few weeks. I'm hoping to share it with business owners, but I can share it with everyone um, of how to actually take stock of where you're at with your goal setting, with your life. Um, There's a lot of things that we'll cover. But in the meantime, uh, Kate, it's been a heck of a summer series. Well done for putting it all together. So many great guests along the way. Yeah, if you haven't listened to any podcast at all for January, there's some great ones there. There was an amazing one I did with Shell about setting Mm. your career up for success this year. She shares 10 awesome tips there. I think that was at the very start of the month, so you might have to scroll back a little bit. But we did an episode on international ETFs, yes. income stocks, money yep. habits, all sorts of things. So. so many great guests this month um, across the four podcasts. It was a bit slower on our other two podcasts, which we didn't publish really any episodes on. So sorry, the business community and property, but we're back. But you've got a business. If someone wants to start a business or a side hustle this year, you're running a series at the moment over yes, on the Australian Business Podcast. Yeah, Australian Business Podcast and the Property Show with Pete, Chris and Amy has just come back. So everything's back in full flight. But what I was going to say, we, we had 153,000. 154,398 different people tune in for a podcast in January. So if you're here and you're thinking, I want to get better with money, I want to try and get a pay rise, I want to work on my business, I want to think about my property goals, you're in the right place. Stay you're not tuned. alone. You're not alone. 2024 is going to be big. If you get to this point, just like all of us, and you think, I didn't achieve my New Year's resolution, have some forgiveness. Uh, it's okay. Move forward. One month in the scheme of your life is not that big of a deal. And as Emma told me yesterday, the year starts in February. (laughs) It does indeed. I can't believe it. We're only in February. Well, Kate, this is heaps of fun. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for listening, everyone. 